Okay, we're right where we left off. So we'll, let's see if we got something else we're gonna research for right now. Yes, we're gonna research this game pad. Oh, but I don't have this money, that's right. Okay, so let's go ahead and make another game. And create custom engine, not yet. Research, okay, here we go. Develop new game. And we're gonna make the old, uh, we're going to make a medieval strategy game. So let's just call this, uh, Lord of the Realms. A lot of times I make my own names. A lot of times I just make uh, names from real world games. This game here, I didn't actually like this Lord of the Realms, but it's the first thing that popped in my head. So it's going to be a medieval strategy game. And we're going to do this one. This is going to be the last game we develop for this system. This G64. And after this, we're going to switch over to Nintendo and we're going to do it with a new engine. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, st stick with the 2D graphics. I've never made that text-based game. I suppose you could, but I was telling you about that other game, the Android game, Game Dev Story. It's it's got more comp, uh, more comp, more. Uh, seems like it follows history better. Like there's no Atari in this one. There's there's Nintendo and Sega and stuff, but there's no Atari. I don't understand that. But anyway, what's important in medieval strategy? Story and quest, not so much. Gameplay, max that out. Uh, I want to keep engine kind of high because I want to be known for my engines. But overall, strategy game, I think gameplay is the most important here. So hopefully these will go up here quite a bit. Let's see, a lot of that stuff leveled up, so it will. Now, artificial intelligence, we're going to max that out. We can turn dialogues down to nothing. And... I think if I'm going to turn down level designing a little bit, we're going to put most of our time in artificial intelligence because strategy game, that's definitely in my book, that's the most important. It's like you play, you know, the new Civ 5 game, they should have put more effort into the AI instead of the graphics. Okay, world design, graphics, we're going to turn, we're actually just going to do all these, uh, bounce these out, see what happens. I don't think one of those is more important. I could probably turn down sound a little bit. I don't know. I think both those are higher than what I've ever done before. Let's see if they go up anymore. 16 for design, 14 for technology. Yeah, we got a record there. That's good. Yeah, so we got new topic, new combo, the great combo. So yeah, we had a lot of stuff level up too. And this will happen is we'll have a blockbuster hit. And once that happens, we'll make it like a million dollars or two million dollars. And we'll be able to move into a, uh, an actual office instead of working in our garage. It costs, that's the requirement to move into an office. You have to make a million bucks. Okay, let's see what our views are. Oh, that's good. Hoping to make a lot of money off this game because we're going to spend a, a, a lot of money making that game engine. So that's not bad at all. We got it's an 8.25. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else to research that would be useful for the game engine. Yes, we want the game pad. That's right. So now we gotta wait for this progress bar to fill up. My little guy there, he's uh, researching gamepad. So this one's not doing too shabby. Okay, I've researched gamepad. So now I'm gonna create a custom game engine. So over here I get to decide so we can do version two graphics. I guess that would be 16-bit graphics. We can have mono sound, which is actually, this is not stereo sound, but it's actual sound before we had bleeps and bloops. We can add a save game feature. We can add a game pad. Now I'm guessing here you don't necessarily want to always highlight all these because they cost money. You can see how much money it costs here, but um, it's cheap. It's ch cheap right now. I'm going to make an engine that will pretty much do everything for me. But see, later on you don't have much. You won't have as much money to spend everything you want necessarily. So 
Um, if you're making RPGs, you might want to put stuff into the stuff that's cool for RPGs and not cool for everything. Okay, they just recently re released a TES. So that sure does look like an NES. <coughs> and we gotta wait for this progress bar to go to zero, then we researched our game engine. Now see, I forget to name it. it I wish it, it lets you uh, make the engine without actually naming it. You don't have to name it, but I like to name it, but I always forget. That's the funnest part of the game to me. I don't know why I was naming the game engine. Well, that one didn't do too shabby, that game. Now see, this engine's gonna be doing a lot better. So, Let's go ahead and get started on this new game. Develop a new game. Uh, actually, before I do that, I want to research a new topic. And I want to research, ooh, fantasy. I, I saw horror there. I've never seen that before. <coughs> so, the sad thing is, I won't let you think of original mixes like uh, you pretty much sticking with fantasy and RPG because that's what's popular if you want to like make a horror RPG it may not this game may not necessarily think that's a good combo and so basically what you're gonna do is, is try to make the games that existed in this history at, the, at that time sort of so an NES just came out so basically I'm gonna be doing Final Fantasy next Okay, now this is gonna. We can. This is gonna let us research um, market, target markets. Yeah, target audiences. So we can target a game at kids or adults or whatever. But okay, so let's go ahead and develop our new game. And I'm just gonna call this Final Fantasy. Now we're going to pick as the topic uh, fantasy. Genre is going to be RPG. Now, see, this right here is going to cost us $80,000 just to develop because we got to buy the license. But if you look, it's got the biggest market share. And we're going to use our brand new shiny engine. And see, so we get to pick which version. Of graphics 2d graphics version 1 or version 2 obviously we're gonna do version 2 now our company just went into the hole so so what are we gonna do here it's an RPG so we want stories and quests to be high game engine not so much we went now over here we can enable the new features of the engine we don't have to but we can so as you can see right here, it's going to be a linear story. You have to research like branching storylines and better dialogue options and all kinds of cool things. But see, all that stuff is built into the game engine, so you can actually spend a lot of money developing the game engine. We want cool dialogues. I'm going to skimp on artificial intelligence. There's really not a whole lot of artificial intelligence in it. Those old school Japanese RPGs. There's rumors that Vina's offering another, is offering a, coming out with a game system, basically Sega. As you can see, our numbers are already kind of higher than they used to be. So see right here, we're going to use mono sound. I want to max sound out because this, and I want to just leave everything like that because I think they're all important. This game is really going to push the technology of the time, so I want the graphics and sound to be really good. These two numbers are already higher than they've ever been, so... This thing right here may be a big blockbuster. We don't know yet. Now, this is crap. This is absolute crap. Okay, now, see, I'm in the negative, so this bank's offering to bail me out. Basically, what I had to do is I have to pay them back double within a year. So, they're charging me 100% APR, which just, to me, is just... I like a simulation. It's like it's getting harder and harder to find a good simulation. 
And some of these guys later on, they're making like a hundred, like, I don't know, something like $50,000 a month. And my guys aren't even that good. I'm not, I, I don't even know what they make at the end of the game, but you got guys here making $50,000 a month. Okay. 25 and 15. I th I'm hoping this will be the big blockbuster. Well, we got a record for design. That's, that's good. There you go. We still got a great combo. The thing about the combos are, I start, it gets harder and harder to think of good combos because you can only do that one combo one time. Like if I make another fantasy RPG, I won't get these first two bonuses anymore. So let's go ahead and release this, see what we did. See, research available joystick. And I don't know why the joystick's available now. The joystick came out before the uh, gamepad. So I'll, I never researched that joypad or joystick. So let's check out the reviews. It's not bad. Eight, eight. Oh, a nine. This might be our big blockbuster. If we can get another nine, probably. Uh, 8.5, maybe. Let's just see. Let's see. I should be developing. I guess I should go ahead and start a new game while I'm waiting. Let's we'll see if there's anything to research. Not really. It's target audience. Yeah, I can take it or leave it. But it seems to me like if you target uh, the younger kids, you don't sell as many. At least I haven't. Okay, let's figure out what we're going to do here. We're going to do... We unlock fantasy. Let's do a fantasy action game. So, I'm going to call this one Altered Beast. And it's going to be a fantasy action game. And we're just going to stick with this TES. Because we've already paid the license fee. So, I'm just going to pretty much ride that until there's something better comes along. Pick game engine. We're still going to use our old trusty game engine one. So now we're doing an action game. So story and quest, not so much anymore. Max out engine again. Oh man, these aren't going up very fast. Fantasy, Final Fantasy is a surprise hit. That's good. These are horrible. They're not moving up very fast. Maybe they will the next level. We're just going to put most of our stuff in level design here. So yeah, you play that game dev story... Like I said, how, if you're enjoying this game, you'll definitely love Game Dev Story. But you actually have game, video game rewards and all kinds of cool stuff on that one. So, okay, what are we going to do here? Action games, you pretty much want to keep graphics and sound real high. But I'm going to turn down sounds a little bit. And world design, we're going to put most of our stuff in the graphics in this game. Okay, the the... Sega Master has been Vega or whatever they call it has been released. Ooh, I sold 45,000 units, so it's probably a record for me. So let's get rid of these bugs and see if these keep going up. Hopefully they'll go up a little bit more. Something. The oh, design went up a little bit. Just wait. Uh -huh. That's basically telling you this thing's not doing well in North America. The new Sega. Yeah, see there it went up. That's why you kind of want to wait. But so this time we got a record for technology. So let's just see how this did. Which just stuff would level up a little quicker. Ah, the graphics V2 went up. So let's release this game. So we did. Now, see, sometimes you might want to trash a game because you could be a company like you want to keep your reputation high. And so if a game's not very good, you just trash it. But Ooh, this game's not looking good. I 
Madness in action, what a great combination. I know. What's up with the mediocre reviews? That's very mediocre. Later on, we'll get to do marketing stuff too, like lots of ads and go to game shows and stuff too. That's pretty cool when you get to do that. Well, let's see if we have anything else we can research here. Let's research a new topic. So if you see these ones that are darkened out, that's the ones I already know. Here's the ones I can research. So let's research racing. And yeah, I'll just do racing. And we'll start the research. I got I got a little bit of money built up now. Later on, I'll be able to train my employees and stuff, too. Well, see, right now I don't have any employees, but I will. <coughs> so I can research casual games, too. That's a good one, because then you can do like games like Guitar Hero and stuff. Make a lot of money, and they're not that expensive to make. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. So 14. That game did horrible. Horrible. Now see, the, gut, the Commodore 64 is finally losing market share. Because they can't launch a, a high-end computer. Basically, following history, Commodore 64 was a great computer, but then it got kind of fell behind technology and they didn't have any luck launching anything better. Basically, they came out one called the Commodore 128. The same darn computer was just twice as much RAM, so it wasn't any better. And most of the games didn't even use that extra RAM. So I had to pay these guys back $170,000 in three months time. Oh, what a bunch of crap. That's completely unbalanced. They should fix that, but oh well. It is what it is. But anyway, I'm gonna go wrap this episode up here and we'll keep playing.